Yo, what's up guys? Say Chronicles here, making a video about Hero Area. So Hero Area, <laughs> main question I've been getting asked at first was like, how do I, where is this thing? Where, like, how, how, what, where, why, when, what? Also, if you haven't yet, like this video, subscribe to the channel. It helps me out a lot to push my content towards more people and therefore just be also be able to make more content. So if you enjoy what you're seeing here, hit those buttons. Okay, first of all, you want to go for your exploration quest. Oh, I can't really show it, but it's all the way at the bottom. It is called the uh, Roll of Fisher, and you have to do this quest line. And I have people doing this quest line and then saying like, but how do I get there? Just, Dude, this quest literally takes you to the portal of each of these hero areas. <laughs> but either how, you don't have to look for these portals yourself, of course. You just go to one of the normal area maps. You click on this purple thing and you see, boom, all of that stuff. So if you want to enter, you just press enter and the thing will walk you right to the portal that's over there. Or any of, any of the other portals that are out there. So let me explain why is the hero area pretty good? What are the benefits from it? Why you probably want to AFK here over the other area and all of that kind of good stuff. So first of all, hero area. What do we have? We have like an... We have the five areas, the five main areas, and all of them have like a specific... Pretty much trade of things that can be recommended to you. So therefore, it's like it says, like okay, use knights, provoke skills, blah blah blah, harmful effects, cleanses. You can kind of read this, so it's more than just having like okay, this is the very simple thing saying like okay, I just need damage or I need fire stuff, so fire takes more, or takes less damage and does more damage. But you can also read this and say like mm, which unit would fit here. So I will kind of recommend you to check out like, okay, which units you think fit here for your team that you do good enough damage, you also survive enough, you don't die. Um, and maybe you can even AFK at one of the bosses. So what do we have as quests? So first of all, we have the quest and the quest is just killing a bunch of units and you get a bunch of rewards. You can do this weekly. It's a bunch of gold, a bunch of these materials, which we'll talk about more later and a little bit of sky stones, not too much sky stones. Then you have these bosses and then you also have the final boss. And the final boss is very interesting because the moment you clear the final boss, you can actually get like full transcendence pieces. That is really dope. Like from what I've noticed so far, I cleared two of them. And in both cases, they actually dropped both the green one and the red one. So it's kind of lucky. It's going to drop a lot of the purple one, which you need least, I guess. But these two, if you, I'm not sure if you always get two out of the three or sometimes maybe just one out of the three or I don't know how it works. But you can do that for every area. So that's a whole bunch of transcendence pieces every week. If you keep in track of like when these bosses are. You might ask, when are these bosses? Well, these bosses actually show up in here. So you can actually just follow. Like they spawn once every four or five days, if I'm not mistaken. I think it's like five days. So you pretty much have like one or two bosses every day. You kind of want to pretty much set timers for when these are going. At least that's what I'm planning to do, because I would say these bosses are more interesting than your robots, and they spawn at more random times. Where they exactly spawn is different per area. I don't know exactly for all areas, in all honesty, but you have enough time if the boss spawns just to walk to the boss. Give it a few hits. You don't actually have to do like a lot of damage on it. Just do a few hits, get your contribution in that way, and then it will it takes as a clear. You also can see for these normal bosses when they spawn, you could farm and fight those, but they are somewhat less interesting. The main thing that you actually want to do is just this. Why are these bosses still kind of interesting though? That is because you can actually get runes from them and you get straight up the complete rune from them, which is a legendary rune of the element that is, or like the type that is shown in here. So in this case, if I would clear bosses near a good a, either a focus rune, five star legendary, or a rage rune, five star legendary. That is very nice. That also makes it that you don't have to only get runes from your path growth. You also get these materials, which is the light engravement stone, and then these rune pieces. And you get a bunch of other stuff as well, which I'll talk about in a second too. So first of all, like let's just say we have a team that can kind of auto this. We have these two units. I think they are currently runes. I would, for example, I will talk more about teams that I recommend you to use in a second, but in this case, I'm just going to set up a team that I know kind of works. This one, this one, and we equip you in there, and we select you, and then we just only want to spam the queue, and we want to use Orbia Dark. So, okay, we just keep running, and we just start clearing a bunch of stuff while I'm explaining the rest of the video. What are those runes? If you go to runes right now, you have rune alchemy. And with rune alchemy, that is where you used to have the things, like there were a few runes that you could craft within profession within alchemy. 
they completely removed it from here. That's actually since the new update that they did that in NA, they also used to have it here, but like more expanded to what uh, is towards the hero area. But they moved everything to Rune Alchemy. It does cost some Sky Stones right now, which does kind of suck, I would say. But I think it is also kind of okay, because you also get some Sky Stones here. You have weekly crafts of uh, 10, and I recommend to always try to aim to get those 10 for the runes that you think are pretty interesting. So that would be like Energy, Rage Blade is pretty en uh, interesting. I would say that these two are still pretty interesting. These are still kind of interesting. This I use a little bit less, and Dur I use a little bit less. Fight or Foresight, that's still kind of good. Swift I don't really use too much. I wouldn't really care about Swift. So for me, the main thing, are, I think these four actually. So you kind of want to farm the ones that get it from that area. So that would be, uh, in this case, the last area. In this case, I'm not entirely sure which area. I kind of have to check out like which area gives which exactly. But what you can do here is you can craft a bunch of those. So currently, I don't have any material for any crafts, it seems like. If anything combined, okay, I can buy, uh, get one Endure. But you can craft it pretty easily, just as an example. And you can get pretty decent runes on it. Sometimes they're just shit, but you can get pretty decent runes on those. You kind of want to keep all of your legendary runes, because the moment we get 6-star runes, you can combine 3-star runes with the rune combination to get a higher ch or to get a chance of getting a 6-star rune. You can already do that on all of your runes right now. Let's see how that actually works. Wait. Can we select all of the runes? In, for example, well, I'm not sure. Yeah, you have a 10% of a greater success. So if we do that, for example, with legendary. So if you have three legendaries, you could change it into a legendary that's more useful. But I would wait with doing those legendaries because you will have that same 10% as a success for getting like a six star rune at that point. I think it will be six star hero, so it's not the most interesting thing but it's still it's probably better than just like disassembling all of your runes i guess so that's something for that but yeah these runes you can get pretty good runes here and you don't have to use any dungeon tickets so i would recommend to try to get aim to get all of these for like the 10 weekly crafts at least for like uh, energy rage and blade so there is a few overlaps so you don't really need too much so you need to farm the purple ones a little bit of the blue ones purple ones and green ones and then green ones and yellow ones so then you would have to check like, okay, which ones, where do I get those? So purple is first area. I need a team with some light stuff. I needed uh, the green ones, which is a team with red. I needed some of the blue, which is a team with green. I needed this. So you kind of need to get a team all along for all of these areas. Would you say like, okay, what are good teams in general? It's actually very simple for units. It also kind of depends on what your main class is. So for me, in this case, um, this is a damage up on Dark. But in this case, I just have Orbia Dark does enough damage. I have three supports next to it. And I'm just good to go that way. Celia is very good for those because you'll be clearing a lot of these units and you're getting a lot of rewards that way. And I'm not clearing as fast if I had like a Dark Damage Dealer in here. It would probably be better. And then I would probably would say I would remove Annabelle, either though Annabelle AoE armor break is very nice, but it doesn't cast it too often. So let's say my Celia is higher skilled, she's not that high skilled right now, and I would put my Dark Monk in here. That would be a better team, for example. So in most cases, you want to aim for that. If you don't have a Dark Damage Dealer necessarily, you can still just go for like any other Damage Dealer. That's kind of like good for like open world AoE damage kind of stuff. So there's a whole bunch of options out there. Then you have these bosses, these side bosses. They also drop like the runes all the time, but they also drop the materials all the time. So it's pretty nice to farm those as well. If you just farm these units over here, you get a decent amount of gold. They drop more gold than the normal area. So it is not that much gold, but if you clear it pretty fast, the gold kind of starts uh, adding up at some point. So you, I would say you probably want to start AFKing here. And what you can do is at some point where you, when you know where bosses exactly spawn, I am not 100% sure in this one. I think one spawns over there, one spawns over there, and one spawns over here. But don't add me on that one. Maybe I'll, like if you guys are interested, I'll make a separate video of like each of the boss spawns for all of them. I think I will do that at some point. The moment I know 100% sure where all of the boss spawns are, 
then I will definitely make like a video on that. I think that's pretty interesting, this video. Also for the final boss that will spawn somewhere, but you can always check on the map the moment it is the time that they should be spawned, just go over there. Or what you can do is you can click on this thing the moment that the boss is up, it doesn't show searching for target, because if I click right now, it will search for a little bit and then it will at some point say searching for target. That means that the boss is just not spawned right now. The moment the boss is spawned, it will actually walk you automatically to the boss. So this is pretty nice. You can get a good amount of runes for it. Um, and what is very nice, and they added that recently, and then they, we didn't have that right away. If you go to the, um, no, not this one, creature book, we have hero area right now. And this is definitely something you want to do at just a little bit at least, because the first clear, rather than getting Skystones, what we did for the normal, we get 10k gold. I literally had, like, sometimes uh, I walk around the area, even if you just did the, the normal quest line, and then you click this, you get, like, two, three hundred k gold. That's an insane amount. Like, the rewards afterwards are pretty nice, like, killing a thousand. Like, for example, I did this one overnight, and I cleared, like, 890 of those. So that one is slightly less interesting. So it's mainly the first clear, I would say, is very OP. Then you have this one, which is also, like, okay, you get a bunch of those materials. I would say the first one is very OP. You at least want to clear everything as first thing. Crystals, I guess, are pretty nice. But you also have the bosses in here. Wait, let me look where the bosses are at. This is one of the bosses. So I actually let it AFK overnight at one of the bosses, which is possible as well because most of these areas are pretty full. You just want to know where a boss is and you just press it on like the auto over there. It will start killing the boss probably. Like for me, it killed it, I think, 10 times overnight. Which means I just get 10 runes from 10 legendary runes. Well, they all, don't always drop runes, if I'm not mistaken. But I cleared that thing 10 times overnight, which is pretty nice. Like, it's just something to do, like, overnight AFKing. I'm not sure if this gives a lot of EXP or something like that. I wouldn't really recommend to do this on your alts that much. But there's something that I have to check and I might recommend to do on alts. But then we have one more thing which I didn't talk about yet, which is, like, okay, what are those of letters? Because those are crafting materials mainly for outfits or actually only for outfits what does that mean well that simply means if we go to a closet we go to the dressing room we scroll all the way down i think it's over here yeah we have two of them over here one is very good like orbia defense 44 that's very nice assassin 36 attack it's pretty nice as well if you use a bunch of assassins so those two are pretty nice but then we have one more, which is actually the really, really good one. And it will also take you quite a while to get, which is this one. You also need the Altered Leather, which I think you have to do something to this to get Altered Leather. I'm not entirely sure how you get Altered Leather, though. But as you can see, you increase Summoner Monster Damage dealt and recovery received by in Arena and Battlefield. That is insanely good. And once again, with outfits, you don't have to wear them to uh, get the bonus. This is by far the best outfit in the game because 5% damage up in battlefields and then getting extra recovery, that is really insane. So you definitely want to get those. I'm just not entirely sure how you get those other pieces. Is that maybe something that is in here? Oh, that is in here. Okay, so you can only craft them once a week. So that's actually important to know as well. You want to start crafting those like all the time. So you want to get 20 at least every week because then you can hand them in for that. And then at a later moment, you can say like, okay, I can craft those pieces because getting that full set, even though it's like super, super OP, we only get one piece per week maximum, which also means that how many do we need? We need two over there, four over there, six over there, four over there. That's going to be months. <laughs> this is literally one month, one month, half month, one and a half month. So. We're looking at four months down the line. Okay, you're not going to get this anytime soon. But still, you have to make sure that you always craft those. Because, like, you don't know how long you're playing this game. But this is one of the important... <laughs> this is straight up the best outfit you can get. But it will take you, well, four months of doing this every week. Which is not the hardest. But you just have to keep in mind. It's one of the things that you have to keep in your system daily. Okay, I'll run those. Then something I wanted to check. Something that someone told me is that you can do all of those quests on all of the characters as long as they are level 60. I am not entirely sure if that is true, but that would be pretty OP and pretty interesting for getting all of those characters to 60. So in this case, I still have to do the quest to open all of the portals. So let me do that first. 
Okay, so I finished the quest, and the thing that someone told me is that you can do all of these quests also on the side characters. And apparently he was right, so I get all of these quests again, which is pretty OP. So if you want to do all of these again, that would be kind of hard. You kind of have to focus on it when they spawn and that kind of stuff. But that is pretty freaking useful. Like, I don't think my Cleave and my Keen are that strong that I can actually do these properly, but... What I can do, which you can relatively easily do, is just always get this one in and on all three characters and in all three areas because this just takes you a little bit of time. But if you have just, you would have to go for pretty sustaining team, I would say, although especially for like if you have a cleave on the side. But I guess this will be clearable as well. It will just take you a while. So this, if you do this on the side character, probably just try to find an area that's pretty filled with a lot of people. Because if you clear this with other people together, then... Well, actually, if you just say, like, okay, hey, can you help me out with doing this quest, like, on a Monday or something with the guildie? And everything they clear counts for you as well. And you actually can click on, like, follow the leader. And then you start killing everything that your leader is also killing. Um, so yeah, that would be definitely something that would help you out to clear this a bit faster, but that is a good amount of gold income. Like this is definitely good gold income. And that actually also makes it that it becomes pretty interesting to get all of your other side characters to level 60. I have been working on that already. So if I do path of growth tickets and my Orbeats already max leveled to as far as the transcendence goes at this moment, which actually reminds me of that I can do this transcendence probably because the other Transcendents, if you already did them on another character, they are for free. So whatever your level is, doesn't really matter. You still get like a slight stat improvement on this. So it's always useful to do if you already did your Transcendents. Even if you're like level 10, you can already do Transcendence 4 if you did Transcendence 4 on your main character. So yeah, with that all, it's pretty nice. But what becomes even more nice is that it means that you can do the quest of the final boss multiple times. So if you already cleared it on your main character and it spawns again that week, you can get these transcendence pieces again from those. That is actually insane. Like, not gonna lie. That's actually, actually insane. So yeah, that is Hero Area. This is pretty much all there is to it. Definitely would recommend you to find out your team which you think works best for AFKing all of these Hero Areas. I will be making a video in the future at some point when I kind of have my team set up, but that also means you need like a bunch of net fives that are more specific for clearing this, for example. So at the start, I will be using a lot of like NFL, Bastet, and Celia. At some point, Galleon will be very good for this in general. Galleon is actually very, very good for this. And since I'm Orbia, I can get away with just, okay, whatever elemental damage I have to do, I just use Orbia. But you could say like, okay, where Fire does more damage, I use Sekhmet, where... Wind does more damage. I use, um, uh, I wait, I wanted to say Cadiz. The other one, Argon. Um, so there's a bunch of options like this. I guess this Cleave, it's the hardest, especially as an alt. So I maybe should level this unit a little bit to get some defense in and that kind of stuff. Also, I think, um, then, yeah, okay. You also should not link your healer to say never use your heal. That's also not really useful. So in this case, I would say, like, Bastet, always use your shield or something like that. I'm not entirely sure what would be the best way to go. But, yeah, getting a 100k for all five areas every week for the two extra characters, so for three characters in total, that's a good amount of gold income. So if you're low on gold, this is what you want to do. So, guys, thanks a lot for watching. If you haven't yet, subscribe to the channel and like this video. And see you in the next one.